Blog Talk Radio. And lift off, lift off on another Tarot Today radio episode here on the Psyche Talk Radio Network. Welcome everyone, I'm Dax Carlisle coming to you live from Tucson, Arizona. I'm a certified life coach and clinical hypnotist, tarot advisor and numerologist, and we are a live call-in show, so give us a ring at 714-816-4628. You can also join us on our chat post and type in the comments there, chat with us during the live broadcast. Just go to PsychicTalk.net forward slash chat. Today's show is sponsored by The Tarot Guild, the international organization for tarot lovers, students, and professionals since 2004. Stop by and visit us at thetarotguild.com. That's our social networking website with all the features of the big social media websites, only it's all tarot all the time. And free to join. And speaking of that, uh, We actually have just launched our fall special, so now you can enroll in our Tarot by the Numbers Tarot and Numerology course for free when you join our premium membership. So go check it all out at thetarotguild.com. Let's bring on my fabulous co-host here on Tarot Today Radio. She's a certified Tarot Master, Crystal Reiki Master, and the Vice President for Certification for the Tarot Guild. And here she is live from Amarillo, Texas. It's the fabulous Mary Brown. Hey, Mary. Hey, Dax. Hey, everybody. Happy Tarot Today Saturday show. <laughs> Happy How's Psychic Saturday. Today? Happy Psychic oh, Saturday. <laughs> I'm excited. This is going to be a great that. show. I'm, at, I'm actually out on the patio. We have a breeze going. You know, we've had sweltering heat, but now it's actually cool almost on the patio here it's really nice perfect for the show we're in the the 90s today i mean we had winter at the end of summer and now we have summer at the beginning of fall i don't know what to make of it (laughs) i'm just like it's 2020 it's par for the course (laughs) so yeah i am exactly I am so excited about the show today. We have a fabulous guest on, Bernadette King, the creator of the ARC Animal Tarot and Oracle Deck. And if you are in our Psychic Talk Radio Facebook group, and if you're not, you need to join, and you can find it by going to psychictalk.net forward slash Facebook. But if you're in the group, you know I post a card of the day every day. And the card of the day I posted today is from this Arc Animal Tarot and Oracle deck. And I got the star card. And you guys, you have to go look at it. It's so beautiful. And it's a polar bear representing the star. And just, just gorgeous. Star is one of my favorite cards ever. So helpful, absolutely, you know. Did you get a? Did you draw a card for the show today? Did I did I did the numerology as always ten ten twenty twenty. Think of that date, Mary ten ten twenty twenty. Mm. Wow. Well, it all adds up to six. That's nurturing. That is that hearth and home energy. You know, uh, family relations, uh, loved ones, friends, even coworkers things like that. The day is a one day because 10 reduces to one. One plus zero is one. 
and that's about self. I got the tower card. And, <laughs> you know, initially people see the tower card and they freak, you know, sudden unexpected change and crisis and all this. I want you to think a little differently about the tower card, though. I want you to think of it as a shift in foundation and getting in alignment with that one energy of self and then in our uh, nurturing and relation with other people, I want you to think of a shift in foundation. So what beliefs are no longer serving you? What relationships, friendships are no Um. longer serving you? What projects, you know, have you not got going and you you need to take it off even the back burner and just, you know, get rid of it and make room, you know? Yeah. So I want you to look at it that way and not freak out that we got the tower card today. <laughs> I'll try. <laughs> I'll now try. I love that. I'll try. Oh wow! I'll well, I, I know a lot of people have been, a lot of people have been waiting for this episode. They're listening in. They've actually got this deck. Uh, Dr. Rose, my co-host on the Friday show, bought this deck. Uh, like. I think two days before you told me you had booked Bernadette on the show. And, and so she's listening in, and I know Sharona Rapsik, uh, she's going to have her show tomorrow. She's listening in. She's in the chat with us at psychetalk.net slash chat. But without any further ado, you know, hey, let's bring Bernadette on, Bernadette King. Yay! <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Woo! Hey, y'all. Hello. Happy Saturday. Hey, Happy 10-10-2020. <laughs> yeah. I know. Isn't that crazy? Happy Saturday to you, too. Isn't that wild? Where, where are you at, Bernadette? I, I don't even know. Uh, I, I think of the Bay I, Area, right? 415? Mm, no, I'm actually in Hurricane Swampy, Florida, my home state. Whoa. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> I love Florida. I have so many. <laughs> Yeah, I have so many friends and family in Florida. Well, come on down. We'll party. I know. We should all get together. (laughs) I'll tell you, I got invited down to visit my aunt, but I couldn't make it. She she lives in Panama City and rode out Hurricane Michael. I'm like, man, this hurricane season is not when I want to visit. (laughs) I don't know if it's just me, but, man, I watch the Weather Channel, and I'm like, whoa, but... But, wow, Florida, talk about, you know, having a lot of animal allies in Florida. Anytime I've gone to Florida, I feel like I'm in the middle of wildlife, even when I'm, like, in a in a city for some reason. Is that mm-hmm. part of the draw for you? <laughs> well, I was born in Miami, and when I was only five, we moved to what's considered North Florida or Central North Florida, And I grew up in the woods, surrounded by a lot of farms, and anything from, like, the Leesburg area, or you guys might know it as Ocala, on through pushing Mm -hmm. into Georgia is is very rural um, and just beautiful. And so, yeah, for me growing up uh, in Florida, that was my experience. And, of course, you know, the larger cities, Orlando, Tampa, Miami, you know, the only wild things there are really the population um, you know, the people that live there. But, yeah, I had the good fortune to grow up around lots and lots of different farm animals and wild animals that are native to Florida. And I had such a love of animals at such a young age that as soon as I could drive myself places, I would go, you know, explore different animal sanctuaries and, you know, have the opportunity to work with different, all kinds of different animals. So it was a very magical experience for me. Um, and oh, one I'll always be very grateful for. That's lovely. Yeah, I, my parents lived in Lakeland on a you know one of those golf course communities in Florida, and um, it was amazing. Uh, I would see cranes all the time, and I you know you have no concept of a crane really unless you see it in person, and it's like what what is this? It's so they're so big, they're so beautiful, and they. The way they pose and stand mm-hmm. there, they they remind me of like they look British to me, you know, like they're like they must speak with British accents and have like these intellectual conversations. I don't know <laughs> why I always thought that, but I remember thinking like that makes nowhere else. Sense. Do, 
you know, it's like they just look like maybe they should wear a little monocle or something, you know. It, it's just like just amazing to me that I would see that, you know, you know, just a couple feet away. I'm like, wow, you'd never know you live in a, you know, city <laughs> sometimes. So tell us more about the Arc Animal Tarot and Oracle deck. This is amazing, and I I do want to say in mm-hmm. case people want to kind of check it out while we're we're talking about it, um, go over to Bernadette's website. What is my what is my spirit animal dot com, and you can you can see uh, a lot more information there about the deck and how to order it and everything. But how did this start? I mean, this is a multi use deck 100 cards when you uh-huh. order this deck you get 22 uh oracle cards plus the 78 tarot cards but how did how did you even come up with this idea and what was what was the journey like for you bernadette so true story um i was called to start a spiritually related website some years ago and the original website is building beautiful com. And it's got hundreds and hundreds of articles on it about auras and chakras and tarot cards and, uh, you know, numerology and just really the symbols and meanings of things, taking a deeper look at that. And that took a lot of time, took a lot of focus. And then one day I, I woke up and I was walking down my hallway and I was very sleepy and so I yawned. And when I opened my eyes, my living room and my hallway were just filled with animals from all over the world. And I went, uh, okay, what's up, you guys? <laughs> Because I had just started a whole spirit totem and power animal section on the Building Beautiful Souls website. So they said, Mm. well, we need you to start a separate site that's just for us. And I went, because I have the time to do that. And they were like, no, you've got to understand it's part of a bigger plan. We really need you to Mm. do this, which really translates into you're going to do this. Okay. So (laughs) I went ahead and I did what I was told. And you never saw a website grow so fast in your life. I went from like a brand new website to 200,000 visitors a month within six months. It was nuts. So I did that. Yeah. I did that for a couple of years. And then uh, one morning I was, did the same thing was walking down my hallway and they all appeared again. And they said, Hey, guess what? We want you to start. We want you to to do a tarot deck based on us. And I said, cause I'm an artist. And they said, well, you're going to find one. We're going to, send, we're going to send you the perfect one. Okay. For a year, I looked for an artist. And the crazy way that Heidi and I intersected on our random, quote, unquote, random um, freelancer yeah. site was just nuts. And that began our two-and-a-half-year journey because that's how long it took to create the deck. Well, what it started out being was a straight-up tarot deck. And then I actually was at the Arthur Findlay College over in England with one of my best friends. And we Mm -hmm. were sitting there one night, and she looked at me and she said, all right, you've got that look in your eye again. What vision are you getting? And I said, shh. And she said, okay. And I said, it's not enough. 78 cards is not enough. We have to make it more. More animals have to be in the deck. And she said, well, there's only 78 cards in the deck. I said, it it doesn't matter. This deck can be what the animals want it to be. Just because a traditional tarot deck is only 78 cards doesn't mean the arc has to be 78 cards. She goes, oh, my God, you're right. So I called my designer the next day, and I said, hey, are you up for this? And she said, sure. And then later in the week at Arthur Finley, they came to me again, and they said, yeah, 100 is not enough. What you'll do is you'll run your Kickstarter We'll give you 49 more animals, completely different animals, so that when, when the ARC launches, people will have 149 animals that can come to them with messages, help them with healing, help them read for others, help them heal for others. And I called her again, and she, I called my designer again. She said, I knew this was coming. Yeah, we're in. And so <laughs> <laughs> that's why it took two and a half years, because it originally started out as a straight-up tarot deck based, based on rider weight. But as the animals downloaded more information into me, it became a much larger um, calling and a much larger effort, which, by the way, I would like to say that every quote-unquote expert I know in the business, because I called the people that I have access to, and they're like, 
your cards are too big. There's going to be too much in the book. It's too many. It's just too much, um, Bernadette. No one will. No, and it'll be too expensive. No one will ever buy it. And I said, well, I'm going to do what the animals tell me to do, and it's going to be what it's going to be. And so far, um, in in nine months from when it launched, it sold over 3,000 decks. I'm already into my second printing. The ARC won product of the year for the cover awards. It also won gold in the tarot category. And the website that it's attached to won audiovisual product of the year and gold of the year in the blog category. So I'm thinking at this point, I'm, and I've already got tons of pre-orders for the extension packs um, and for the new special editions that are coming out. And so I'm thinking the animals were right. It's been very well received. Oh, yeah. It's the most it's the most comprehensive work literally on the planet of anything having to do with animals. But the bigger picture of that is that they, the the animals downloaded into me a new way of working with their energy. And that's because, Oh my God, at this point I've probably received 2000 emails about, well, I hear about spirit animals. I hear about totem animals. I hear about power animals. What's the difference? And there really yeah. is no difference. It just depends on what culture you're getting the information yeah. from. So what they asked me to do was say, okay, look, let's give people an easy system to understand how to in- interpret the messages, how to integrate the messages and the healing and the energy. And that's what, and, and I, I, it hasn't been that right now. It's all about the animals for people, but over time it's going to become about the arc system about how to utilize that newer, Mm. it's an ancient system. Let's put it this way. It's an ancient system with new organization, if that makes sense. So it will will become about that over time. Right now people are, they're they're just getting into the animals to see other than Ted Andrews' original deck. Oh, Ted Andrews gone way too soon. Um, Yeah, I'm the only deck that, yeah, I'm the only deck that has real animals. And while there are some yes. unbelievably beautiful animal decks out there, my animals said, oh, no, 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 no. We, we, we are who we are, and we're going to send yeah. you the right ones. You must use real mm-hmm. pictures. And so other than, like, you know, animals we couldn't get pictures of, like, you know, Tyrannosaurus Rex or, you know, yeah. a Triceratops. <laughs> Um, and a dragon, of course. And then, of course, you know, we had to do some others like, like Minotaur and that kind of thing. Other than those. I like uh, dragons. You know, I like dragons. Yeah. Oh, who doesn't, <laughs> right? Um, oh, but yeah. Bernadette. So that's the story. Talk, yeah. Bernadette, talk, talking about animals, let's address the elephant in the room. <laughs> so, <laughs> as, as, a, as a channeled deck, you know, what was the experience like? Like, you know, how does that even work? Explain that to us. We there's inquiring minds want to know. <laughs> um, so it was easy for me because I got my start as an evidential medium. So the very first thing I learned to do was to step out of the way and let spirit talk and me hear it without judgment, without my filters. And that's why I was so adamant, mm. even when all the naysayers and experts said, you're going to lose your behind, this is not going to fly, it will not. they gave me all the reasons why it wouldn't, I knew that mm. they were wrong. And so the experience for me was, you know, hey, another day, another channel. But because it's animals, because I knew they told me at the very beginning the importance of the work, it was a, a, a it was and still is a very very sacred quest for me to get it right and do it right because what ultimately the point of this deck is is that even for animal lovers I mean I've gotten oh my gosh y'all I get emails all the time right so even people that work with animals veterinarians vet techs people that work at sanctuaries people that work at zoos what they're the feedback they're getting is that through the cards they're having a much higher consciousness about animals and connecting to animals in a much deeper and stronger way than they ever have and that is compelling them to want to do more for animals or do things at a higher mm-hmm. level and that's the entire point of this deck so for me it was taking a sacred vow 
which then became a sacred quest, which has now become my life's work. And so, yeah, yeah, that's, I mean, that's what it was like. That's amazing. You know, and, and that, yeah, I think this, I think this deck is really innovative. And there's, you know, there's, there's so many layers to it. But the one thing that stood out to me immediately was how you differentiate between spirit animal, totem animal, and power animal. Because you're right, those terms are really pretty much used interchangeably, you know, like in the, um, you know, shamanic tra- practitioner community, you know, you hear, you know, the terms thrown around a lot, but the way this deck is organized, the way that you break down those meanings, um, really, I thought was brilliant. I was like, oh my gosh, that is exactly, she's right, you know, she's right, and I don't know, I mean, I'm just like, <laughs> she's right, <laughs> you know, I just, I just knew it, um, and just for our, for our listeners, um, can you kind of give them an example, you know, what the difference is between a spirit animal, a totem animal, and a power animal, according to to um, how you organize them? Sure. And was that something um, the animals told you, or did it just become kind of apparent to you? So it's kind of both, and here's why. So I, like you all, I have a lot of astrologer friends, and when I started mm-hmm. working with when I started working with what I at the time termed, um, you know, cause I followed Ted Andrews. He, you know, I couldn't really find yeah. anybody else to follow. And so for, for yeah. decades I followed him and I thought of everything as a totem animal. And when I would have conversations with my astrologer friends, I was like, well, you know, I, I hear what you're saying about all this and I totally get it. But you you know, at the end of the day, the, you know, every Zodiac sign except for Libra is, an animal and it's got to be based in animal legend lore and symbolism. And even the Gemini twins, humans are classified as animals. So in my personal belief in the, in the system that I use, people can be your totem. I mean, people can be your spirit totem and power animal because they are classified as animals. If they were classified as something else, no, they couldn't. Mm -hmm. So I was sitting there trying to figure out how to do the descriptions I'm like, well, this means this, but this means this, but these people mean this. And poof, up in my email popped another email, and it was this poor girl, and she was so confused about everything. And she was like, I just don't understand the difference between a spirit totem and power animal. And it was really late at night, and I was just super relaxed and a really open channel, and the information just went through me. And in five minutes, a spirit animal is this. And that is, as it was downloaded into me, your spirit animal is the animal that your spirit needs at the time. You may have consciously asked for that animal to come to you. You may have subconsciously cried out for the help. But like, for instance, I went through a fairly icky divorce because what what divorce isn't fairly icky at some point a few years ago. And (laughs) And unicorns kept popping up everywhere. And the more they popped up, the angrier I got. I was like, listen, y'all, I'm going through a divorce (laughs) while I'm wrapping you up and you're sending me, you know, hello, kitty. Come on now. I need something more substantial than that. And the more I said that, and y'all, by y'all, I meant to my spirit animals. Yeah. And the more they, the more they, the more I resisted, the more unicorns I got. Long story (laughs) short. There is a, I got this crazy great house for a crazy good price in a crazy good neighborhood. And it's just nuts how it happened. But guess where the house is at? It sits right next to a, it sits right next to um, another community called what? Forest of the Unicorn. Duh. What? But I wasn't, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually have a blog about that on my, on my website because you can't make this stuff up, right? And the other, just, just to, yeah, so so I had consciously asked the spirit animal guides, our animal allies, to send me messages, what move do I take mm-hmm. next, am I following the right path, so on and so forth. And they did, because who doesn't want to get a unicorn that tells you everything's going to be okay? But, you know, I'm looking for like, right. a bear or a wolf or an eagle, you know. So yeah. when that animal keeps appearing to you, however that manifests, that's your spirit animal. And if you, if you don't even know that you've cried out for it, it's really important 
to stay open and, and note what's coming. Your totem animal is who you are. Very, And it all starts with your zodiac sign. That's your birth totem animal. That's who you were born yeah. under. But then there are layers to that. You've got a rising sign and a moon sign and a this and a that. And there are layers to that. But at the end of the day, your original animal. But, but like for me, I'm a triple Scorpio. And I, mm. although I, I, I know, scary, right? <laughs> so I, no, I am too. <laughs> oh, and, wow. my, and my son has, my son, one of my sons has a stellium, a stellium in, in Scorpio. Talk about oh, freaky. Wow. But go ahead. <laughs> wow. So I, I have exhibited for, you know, for my life, tons, tons of Scorpio tendencies. But since I was old enough to even verbalize or see animals, I have been obsessed with bears, and I mean obsessed. So much so that even before I knew about metaphysics, you know, everybody wants to know what their name means. Well, my name, Bernadette, is the feminine counterpart to the French name Bernard, and Bernard, translated from French to English, means brave, strong bear. So bear, yeah, so my birth totem is a scorpion, but my totem... My so I call it my soul totem, is a bear. So people can determine that for themselves. And just hearkening back very quickly to spirit animals, those can change through your life. And you can have one spirit animal at the time, or you can have ten of them show up. It just depends on what you need. The animal allies will know what you need, even when you don't know it yourself. Now, your power animal, this is the one that I love to talk about the most because my my hashtag, my call sign for years now has been stay wild. As you probably know as a Scorpio, the first time somebody tries to hem you in or jail you or control you, you're oh, like, yeah. I'm out, I'm gone, goodbye. <laughs> and so yeah. I believe because we're all connected, I mean, even scientifically, we share so many DNA pairs with so much, you know, other living things on this earth that I believe when you need to be a tiger, you can reach inside of yourself and invoke or unite with that part of your literal DNA that knows what it is to be a tiger. And you can emulate the good stuff and the not so good stuff. You know, you mentioned earlier, Dr. You mentioned the tower card. Well, in my deck, it's a snake and it's one of my favorite cards because Yes. Does anybody want to have to go through that destructive process? No, of course not. But the snake does it. The snake sheds its skin six, seven, eight times a year. And that means that is some kind of courage to do that growth, that growth, that growth. It's uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable. We've got to grow. We've got to go. We've got to do. And so if you want to reach inside of yourself during a time of turbulent change and find that snake part or whatever else is going to help you get through it, Likewise, it doesn't have to be, you know, there's great power in being out there and aggressive and forceful, and there's great power in being able to sit in complete silence and not move. And if you need a a more quiet animal because, you know, I'm a doer, you know, you say something to me, I'm on it, I'm on it, I'm on the job. And, And I'm just now learning in my 50s the power in just chilling out, just let's see where the chips fall, And then after the smoke clears and the debris is, you know, cleared away, now what are we really dealing with? And you can connect with whatever animal you feel like can help you get there. And you can also ask to be shown the animal that you need. You may not even know what animal you need, but if you set an intention in a meditation or, you know, just send the call out to the animal allies, they'll show you what animal you need to connect with, to unite with, and then bring forth that energy. Now, let me say that comes with a caution because if you're not, if you're like, if you're in an emergent situation or maybe, you know, I've heard this before from people in toxic relationships or a little bit dangerous relationships and they're like, so I brought forth my gorilla and I punched a hole in my Mm. wall and I'm like, well, okay, now let's talk about that for a minute. You know, that, that one comes with some, you know, like everything in metaphysics, you know, you got to, you got to think it out. Let's reason this out. But that's my power animal is my favorite because at the end of the day for the animals, the arc is about 
raising the consciousness of humanity so that they'll do better by animals and do more for animals. But at the end of the day, they designed the ark so people could self-actualize and have self-empowerment in a way they've never had access to before, never. And when I teach classes on this, holy cow, you should see people walk out. It's just it's the greatest privilege of my life to be on the cry. It really is the greatest privilege of my life to be involved, to be involved in it. Well, it's just what it does for people. It's crazy. It's yeah. just crazy. Yeah. Well, it's, you know, it's a, it's, it's just like um, a lot. I just, a lot of what you're saying is really resonated with me about just how, um, the animals have come to you and how they, you know, work in different ways and stuff. Um, It's funny, like, you know, for me, years ago when I, when I tried to start meditating, you know, I had tried when I was like a teenager and got into the whole, you know, old school, like TM and stuff. And, and I was like, man, I don't know. And then I tried again and, you know, later on, um, and I was trying to just clear my mind, trying not to see anything. I wasn't calling in anybody, nothing like that. And, I, you know, close my eyes, trying to clear my head, and I just start seeing lions. I'm like, what, 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 what is this? Why are you here? You know, like I, I didn't even think of them as being here. I just thought it was, you know, what am I doing? Why can't I clear my head? And now all these lions, I don't know what's up. And every time for, for a few years after that, every time I try to go into meditation, first thing I would see would be lions. And then, you know, mm. that took me down a, a whole long year, years and years rabbit hole of still learning. You know, I took out Animal Speak by Ted Andrews. I'm like, okay, lion, hmm, hmm. Well, I don't know. All of this sounds like it could be related, you know. <laughs> and then, um, you know, ended up getting into, like, Linda Tucker's work with lions and all of this different lion shamanism, all of this different stuff. And then at some point, you know, I just came to feel like this was like a guardian for me um, because the one mm-hmm. connection I never, I never thought of. And I want to ask you about this because I think it's like, I think I've heard of other people having similar experiences and none of us really know what to call it. But after a while, I realized that my biological father, who I had never known, his name was Leo. And oh. so, you know, it, it just, like occurred to me like what is this and so I kind of thought of it I mean I read about power animals totem animals spirit animals etc but I came to think of it as like a guardian animal spirit so do are there what would you absolutely do? what is that you know when when it's always there you you weren't even thinking about calling it you weren't even thinking about lions like ever in your life you know and yeah so there are there kind of things outside of the spirit totem, animal totem, um, power animal, spirit animal thing where we can you know interact with animals kind of in a in on you know in a clearly a spiritual way or a psychic way and what do what do we think of them as like what's that about? That is an amazing question that no one has ever asked me before. So I'm going to have to ask you a couple of questions before I can even, and I'm, I may not be able to give you an answer and I may have to thank you for giving me another something to research and think about and ask the animal allies about, because I've never had anybody ask me that. So was your, was your birth father alive when you first started seeing lions? No. Okay. My very first reaction but probably because my background is in evidential mediumship is that it was a visitation from your biological father for whatever reason that said yes. that you ended up feeling because it's about the feeling, right? That you right. ended up feeling like this lion was always there to protect you. Here's yes. what you may you may or you may not be able to remember from that time. 
during that period in your life, did you feel like you needed extra protection? Whether you consciously called out to the animal kingdom or not, did you feel yeah. like you needed strength or somebody to back you up or something in your life? I'm most inclined to think it was your spirit animal that you see. Spirit animals show up for many reasons. They show up for mm-hmm. love and support and healing and, but they also show up as protection. Yeah, I think, I think what sense? it was, it does make a lot of sense because I, you know, I tend to be clairaudient more than clairvoyant, mm. let's say. Gotcha. And mm-hmm. I've, I'll, and I and I think I've done that on purpose because I've had this like I don't want to see some crazy stuff you know like I don't want to see yeah. some you know that was just my attitude for the longest time and I think I had a little bit of that fear going back into mm. um, you know meditation and stuff it's like I you know I I wanted to do it but I didn't want to be freaked out by something sure and, totally get that. So it's like every every time for a long time I would start a meditation session, I'd always see the lions first. And, you know, after, you know, the first 20 times of that happening, it's like I came to expect it and I came to feel like, okay, I'm ready, you know, or I don't know. It did make me feel mm. like that sense of protection, sure. Well, also, when you take a look at lion energy, it is such a solar symbol. And my mm-hmm. other question would have been, were you going through a little bit of a dark period or a feeling of coldness or just something where you needed, well, two things. Did you need that solar energy in your life, but then that's also the solar plexus? Were you going through a time where you wanted to be more creative or wanted to have more confidence in your creativity or your ability to create anything? not just a piece of art, but it could have been a family, a job, a life that you wanted to create yourself into something. And that's entirely possible that it came also as a solar symbol to stimulate your solar plexus chakra. What happened, you know, shortly after I started working as an entertainment journalist in Hollywood where I was constantly surrounded Mm. by the greatest creators in the world. And so, you know, yeah, I, I probably I probably did want a little bit of sun too, because you can feel like really like ah, uh, you know, like uh, I'm talking to Brad Pitt, um, you know, like you your voice, like you you have to clear your throat, you know, you have that nervous kind of energy, you know, and I was just starting out um, with that, so it was definitely like a new. Yeah, I felt like, you know, the sun was shining brightly, you know, like the glare mm. <laughs> from everybody. So, wow, I never thought of that. Does that See, make sense? Now that's, yeah, it makes total sense. And here's what's super kooky. So we're both triple Scorpios, and I spent 25 years in the entertainment business managing child and young adult actors. And the best part of what I ever did, I'm, I'm a master level acting coach. So when I talk about oh, wow. human performance, yeah, when I talk about human performance and confidence and self-actualization, that's always been my life's work. But it's so much easier and deeper and better achieved in what I'm doing now. I just think it's yeah. I just think our parallels are super kooky. Kooky. They are super. That is kooky. <laughs> oh my goodness. Wow, I'm stunned. <laughs> so. <laughs> Hey, Mary. Uh, yeah, do we have a – you said there's a question in we're the at, chat room? Yeah, we're we're at the bottom of the hour. Do you want to do the upcoming shows also? And then in chat, Rini's got a question. Excellent. Yeah, so this week on the Psychic Talk Network, we've got some amazing shows coming up. Starting with tomorrow is the Magic Universe, your host, Sharona Rapsick. And she's going to be talking about the legacy of Walter Machado, mucho, mucho, and more that's going to be so exciting. Plus, she's going to be um, having open lines and for tarot mini readings if you want to call in and either chat by on our 
Facebook post on our Facebook group. You can also post questions there for Sharona as well. And then that will be followed on Monday by the Wisdom of the Soul show with your host, Janice Fuchs. Our next show after that is the Compassionate Life Healing and Guidance Hour with host Catherine Hahn. She's starting a new series of episodes called You Have the Power to Change the World. And then Dax will be back next Friday, October 16th. The Doctors Are In show with his co-host, Dr. Rose Wilkerson. Um, And actually, they're taking a break. Are you taking a break next Friday? And you're coming back on the 23rd, right, Dax? Yeah, I was going to jump in later and correct that. Uh, We're taking Friday off, and we'll be back the following Friday. But you and I will be on next Saturday. You and I, yes, you and I will be back next Saturday. We're going to be doing open lines and mini readings all show long. And that is our upcoming shows. You can find that easily by going to psychictalk.net forward slash upcoming. Awesome sauce. Yeah, I actually have all the shows all through November, all the way to December. So you guys can mark your calendars. Yeah, yeah. So Bernadette, uh, Reedy's asking a question. Uh, let, me, let me see if I can. <laughs> so long. Uh, let me see if I could get this out of here. So, so uh, Reedy asks Bernadette, um, what is the lion, cheetah, and crow saying in your deck? The lion is showing up in all of my Rider Waite Smith Tower readings lately. The crow, the, let me see what she says here. The crow flies with his feet to bang my crown, my head, in my driveway, landing near my feet. I don't know if she's saying metaphorically or that actually happened. Oh, my God. Um, right. the, cheetah is my, the cheetah is my orange kitty cat lineage, and he, she really, really meows, talks to me, nudges, shows up beside me no matter if I'm in my garden or washing the dishes, cooking in the kitchen. Kitty is always there. Even napping, I also have a puppy dog. Why are why are these animals showing up and now in your deck? By the way, the cover of your deck is awesome and beautiful. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, thank you so much for the kind words um, about the jaguar on the deck. Couldn't couldn't have anything else other than the shamanic jag on the on the deck on the front. Yeah, so, mm, that's gorgeous. a really yeah that's a that's a lot to unpack. That question is a lot to unpack. And I always find it well, easier. whatever you can throw out. Yeah, exactly. So here's what I would say. Let's talk about the cheetah first. So the cheetah in my deck is actually not in the main deck. It's in one of the expansion pack decks, which is the mother, um, mothers and babies deck. And so when I see people, you know, now cat energy does have a, a regular symbolic meaning, but then you start breaking it down to, Himalayan cats or, or jaguars or black panthers, um, you know, it could be a, a, a Bengal cat. It could be your domestic short hair. It could be anything. Each of them means something different. So I'm going to answer the question about the cheetah, which is this. Um, cheetahs, there's an interesting lore behind them because when you look at them, the moms always look like they're sad or they're crying. And that has to do with an old African um, myth or legend or tale um, about how one of the mother's uh, cubs was killed, and so that's why she now moves them for all of these eons. She moves her cubs always everywhere. They never stay in one place like other cats do in a den um, full time. And so they are also, if I, uh, if I remember this correctly, they're the fastest cat uh, in in the world, or if not, they're in the top three. So I would say that if cheetah is coming to you, let's pay some special attention to whatever you consider your child. It could be a physical child. It could be a business. It could be something you're trying to create. Anything that you feel like you're nurturing, pay some special attention to it and realize that this might be the time for you to move fast, meaning let's go from point A to point B to point C to point D. And just as I tap into this person's energy psychically, I feel like this person um, has a little bit of a getting motivated uh, thing going on. She could, she, she probably wishes she was a little more motivated 
and that she also probably wishes that she um, could finish what she started. She, she starts this and then moves on to this and moves on to this, and that's fine. But make sure that you're moving on to this and this and this within the same project so you hit the finish line. When we talk about a crow, there's no crow in my deck, but there is a raven, and in some ways they're interchangeable. Well, I love the raven card because it's the magician card uh-huh. in the traditional tarot, and that is just such a powerful card, which gives you just unbelievable energy and medicine behind your ability to create and use the as above, mm-hmm. so below mm-hmm. principle. So that's why I really feel like there's uh, that connection then with the cheetah energy, that thing that she wants to create or has created and wants to take to the next level or even to create, let's see it through. Let's see it through to its conclusion. And I'm sorry, the third card that she asked about, the third animal? Um, uh, it was... I, I think that pretty much covers it. I mean, Lion. she was talking about her yeah, cat and, and the puppy dog, she said, her puppy dog. Oh, I did want to mention, I, I heard back from Rini, and she says that uh, the crow is real-time in my actual driveway. So that's an actual thing that happened with the crow. Gotcha. So if it's diving for her head, you know, that's where your crown chakra is, and that's going to really go back to the ability to create magic, the ability to create, understand, you know, the magician is, I, I do everything by will, and I, I, I can will anything to happen. And sometimes that's not going to come through your heart. You've got to figure out what it is that you want to create first. And you, you may not be in complete control of that. You know, it might be, obviously it would be part of your sacred contract if you believe in sacred contracts, which I, which I do. I believe I signed up in this lifetime or, you know, before this lifetime to do the art before I came in and did. But if she would just sit and realize that she does have that magic to be the magician, that she can open that crown chakra and the accurate information will come in, she does not have to second guess it. And then if she'll act on it, that would be awesome. Awesome. Right. Yeah, so Rini says it was the lion. Uh, I, I think she's referring to that the strength card's been showing up. So, you know, with the lion on it and – Ah, uh, I don't know yeah. if that's what she my, means, but she might do. And in my <clears throat> and in my deck, of course, it is the lion that is the strength card, and that's a mind over matter card. It's also a love wins mm-hmm. card. And you know, I just had, so weird. Oh, Mary, this might could have yes. been for you at that time. This might could have been for you at that time when lion was showing up because um, I just had this conversation with a client last week. And I kept seeing Lion come in for her, and I'd never read for her before. And I said, ma'am, I said, because um, I'm from the South and everybody's ma'am and sir. And I said, right. <laughs> um, <laughs> I said, ma'am, are you going through a time where you just really, you're really bothered with yourself and you're really putting pressure on yourself to be better, to do better, to break old habits, to break, break old patterns? Yeah. She said, you have no idea. I said, well, I kind of do. I'm psychic, but... Um, I said, I believe that's why Lion is showing up for you today because you see Lion, the strength card is about mind over matter, but it's about love wins. She's not subduing that Lion in a harsh or nasty way. It's through her love. And I said, and so if love wins, who's the, who, where do we need to, who's the person we need to love the most? So that we can have that mind over, she said, "Oh my gosh!" And so that may have been what you were being called that that kind of that self love, as hokey as that might sound. And for this gal, yeah. uh, Rini Renee, she might be being uh, told that also by the strength card by the lion. It's possible. Oh wow! Mm. I love that. I love that. That makes a that makes a lot of a lot of sense to me. You know. A lot of times, you know, I, I do most of my readings by phone, and so I'm, I'm, you know, occasionally I'm like, they don't see the cards, but I'm describing them to them, mm-hmm. and I forget which deck, you know, did it, like, so so explicitly, but there's this one where the strength card, the the woman is leading the lion, and it's just a chain of daisies that she's guiding it with. Oh. Yeah. And, and mm-hmm. 
and so I use that a lot of like, you know, you don't forget that that gentle side of strength. Don't forget mm-hmm. that it doesn't always yeah. take take that. It doesn't take you don't have to roar. <laughs> you know, so much. Yeah, well, that's the main thing. Love conquers all is what I think of when I see that in you know, my Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, no, it's beautiful. It's one of my favorite cards too. But I wanted to ask you, um now this deck started on Kickstarter, right? That's the that's the path that that you chose um for this and kind of what was why Kickstarter, what was that like we we always see a lot of campaigns now for different people doing doing decks and stuff on Kickstarter and but what's it like to do that? Was that a good was that an easy process or Um, I don't know that it was easy Um, you know it was a lot of work it was much more work than people's blogs tell you it's going to be but the reason that I did a Kickstarter was was purely business and that is that is listen I love publishers without them I don't even know what this world would be like but for me as a business person When I took a look at the numbers, I was like, "Mm, I think I'm going to self-publish. So that's really where Kickstarter started. And when I checked in with the animals, they said, we'll support you on this. And they did. The, the The good news is, in hindsight, what I realize now is when they told me to start their standalone website that, you know, four years before I did my Kickstarter, I didn't realize what they were doing was building me up to have the audience so that when I did launch a Kickstarter, it would be successful. And that ah. they, they arranged, they arranged that years before this ever happened because ultimately, so what you'll see on Kickstarter is that it raised like close to $42,000. But when you run a Kickstarter and you choose to use a thing called backer kit that then, you know, allows you to bill and it keeps track of everybody and, you know, that kind of thing, it allows you, to offer add-ons or other merchandise. And when I did that, it raised almost another $8,000. So all in all, I raised right at $50,000 for the art. And what that did was enable me to print more decks, which enabled me to sell more decks. And, Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's not that way now. I'm footing the bill myself in the second printing, but I've been fortunate enough to secure distribution around the world. So when I work with distributors, yeah, you make more money per deck. And if a person's got it in them to do that, I highly recommend Mm -hmm. it. But it's a long-term play, and you've got to love business to do it. For most people, it's going to be so much better for them if they have a really good publisher. For me, it wasn't the route that I chose to go. I might in the future, though, I've got a book coming out that is the most comprehensive work on anything spirit, tone, and power animals. It's like a 700 page compendium and I'm still kicking. Wow. Do I want to, do I want to plead and beg with somebody to publish me or do I just want to run another Kickstarter and do it myself? But you know, the card business I knew a little bit about now I know a lot about it, but I know nothing about the book business. I'm just like, yeah, this could be dangerous water. So the spirit animals haven't told me what to do yet, but they will. When the time is right, they'll they'll give me clarity. If they just haven't given me clarity yet, or I haven't heard it. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Oh, when we were talking about Rini's question, expansion packs came up, so I wanted to ask you to go a little bit deeper into that. You know, uh, that you know that's something. Yeah, I'm thinking of World of Warcraft with the expansion pack. <laughs> it just popped in my head, you know. And, and I'm thinking, I don't, I don't think anybody's done that. I mean, yeah, people have come out with like hundred card decks, and it's like, well, it could be used as a tower deck too if you just use the 78. You know, but not the concept of having additional expansion packs, additional expansion packs, additional expansion packs. You know, I, I think that's a fantastic idea that a lot more people should be jumping on uh, to further their project, you know, where it, it just, it doesn't just stop at 78 cards or, or, you know, one deck, you know? So how did that idea come up and uh, what, what's the plans for those? So the, the 49 extra cards, that idea, as I mentioned earlier, that came when my friend and I were at Arthur Finley college and they were, 
the allies were, the animal allies were like, yeah, 100 cards is not enough because there are billions of animals in the world, right? And so I was like, okay, well, how many more cards? Do 49 cards. And then they said, but divide it into, like, themes. And that way people can mix and match. And what they showed Oh, my God, I was just thinking of that. Yeah, what what (laughs) they mentioned was um, World of Warcraft, but what they showed me was Magic the Gathering. And I was like, oh, I get it. Same thing. So, yeah. Yeah. So, same diff. So, I... um, I was like, oh, okay, well, I actually really like that, and let's do it like that. And it's been so well-received because, you know, if you pull something from the mystery pack, that's going to just give you deeper insight into the mysteries that you may not see. If it's moms and babies, it's going to be about family, but mostly about Uh. something that you feel as a baby. Then there's friends, family, lovers. That's going to be, you know, that's going to give you the added energy of friends and family and lovers. And then there's the prehistoric and mythological creatures deck because, Across the board, I find that people Mm -hmm. just don't think of the fantasy or mythological or prehistoric animals as a spirit, totem, power animal. But they are, and they can be, because thoughts are things. And once something is a thought form, you know, there may probably have never been a real minotaur, half man, half bull. But once it became thought of and it became fable, I guarantee you it's a thought form running around out there somewhere in a universe that we just don't consciously oh, yeah. remember. So yeah. it's in like for it's me it's the dragons. Mind. Exactly. But listen, I, I'm i I'm thoroughly convinced dragons are once run once roamed to this earth. We'll have to talk. But Yeah, me too. <laughs> You know, I'm the one looking in my backyard in the preserve behind my house going, I know, okay, okay, safe folk, I know I'm going to see you today. Where are you, gnomes? So I'm, I'm, I'm convinced I'm going to see them. But there are actually, I have, over the next seven years, I have a book and a deck planned for every year. And so next year, the book wow. will come out, which is the big compendium. Um, and I, I, I would love to tell you guys about the deck that I'm working on now that will be able to be mixed and matched, but I really want to keep that under wraps until most of the artwork right. is done, and you'll understand. You'll hey, understand Mary. why when I. Yeah. Hey, hey, Mary. That means we get to have burned it on for the next several years. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna have to come back <laughs> at least once a year. We always think ahead, Bernadette. Oh, yeah. But, I mean, that's almost exactly what I was thinking about. You know, it popped in my head. Okay, there's the aquatic ex- expansion deck. There's the aerial. There, there's the mm-hmm. prehistoric. There, there's the uh, mm-hmm. uh, the mythological. You know, I mean, it's, it's not exactly what you're doing, but it, it, it's like really close to what popped in my head. I was like, my God, you could go now on for a while thinking. with this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And that's the plan because, you know, it's like I, you know, if I post a jaguar or a giraffe or a bear, people go wild. They share it a billion times. But you post a silkworm, and all you hear are crickets. Yeah. Wah 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 wah. People don't give a crap about yeah. the crickets. But you know, it's like yeah. the fly that landed on. It's like the fly that landed on Pence's head. <laughs> like I'm, I'm watching all the Twitter. I'm, I'm laughing at all the memes. Okay. And yeah, and I never ever ever talk about anything political at all. But at the yeah. end of the day, it's a it's an animal, and and I know the symbolism of what was going on. No matter which side of the fence you're on, there's a message in there for you. So I've really been like pacing my house, asking the animal allies, do I do a video about this? Because for the coronavirus, I didn't want to touch that at all. But but I said to the animals one day, no joke, in the morning I said, okay, I'll take the plunge. If you want to send me a definitive, this can't be a cat, it can't be a dog, it can't be somebody's canary that escaped, you've got to send me a no joke coronavirus spirit animal. Three hours later, across the street, wow. I look out my window, and there's a huge wild turkey on the roof mm. of my neighbor's house. Now, I live in a neighborhood. What? what? I've lived here for for several years. A wild turkey, which then jumped off the neighbor's house, ran down my side yard, jumped my seven-foot-tall privacy fence, ran through my backyard, jumped my chain-link fence in the back, and hauled it to the preserve in the back. And wow. I, I had a friend here who we were just looking at each other, 
just looking at each other, and I said, well, there's the spirit animal, and I did a video about it. I mean, you know, so yeah, the fly is different because, you know, the joke's about it, and God knows there are some funny people in this world. But it's a real <laughs> thing, y'all. And if, and if no one yeah. has noticed, it's a black fly on flat white hair. Hello. Like the symbolism of this could go forever and ever and ever. So I really want to encourage people to, no matter how small that animal is, no matter how insignificant you think it is, it's not. You're wrong. And, and they're coming to you out of the goodness of their soul. Accept the gift. Accept the gift and let it let it enrich your your life in the way that it's meant to. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. And you know what's funny is um, I did a I did a, a walkthrough of of your deck for for my YouTube channel and the fly oh, is thank is, you is, yeah I just I'm like hey, you've got to see these cards you know the the fly is the five of swords was one that mm-hmm. I you know as I'm walking going through the cards I was like oh wait a minute that's perfect you know and because it, you know in, in Dax you know when you think of the five of swords you think you know the fly and you know my personal experiences with flies I've had a lot of them this summer and there is that sort of, uh, you know, I'm in conflict. <laughs> you know? And, I t- you know, to me, Five of Swords a lot of times has to do with boundary issues. It's like that kind of conflict, you know, where somebody, mm-hmm. you know, may have kind of crossed the line a little bit and you kind of feel like, mm, this, you know, that, that sense of like even like annoyance um, comes about. And I have that you know, kind of reaction um, to the flies when, you know, when I'm eating lunch, I don't have something against flies in general. It's just, come on, buzz off my sandwich. Okay. You know, (laughs) kind of thing. But, and and I, and I literally thought of that when I was watching the debate and and saw that fly, I was like, five of swords, (laughs) you know, because of your deck, I made that instant connection. Oh wow! So funny. Okay, that's cool. you know what? Thank thank you for sharing that. That might have given me the courage to go ahead and do a piece about it because somebody, one person out there, thought the Five of Swords makes total sense. Thank you. Yeah, it, you, you're welcome. You can do it. Yeah, I'm you can see. watch the video. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think I oh, will. My <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Oh my goodness. So this hour has just flown by. Flown by, yeah. Don't you think it has? And Dax, was there anything else you wanted to to ask about? I feel like we had a billion questions, but we've had such a great conversation <laughs> the whole time. We cover we covered most of it, I think. You know, I was just thinking how Bernadette reminds me of uh, Stephanie Arlen Lynch, president of the ATA, or past president, oh, yeah. I think now. Yeah, because she, she always ends everything with y'all. Yeah. <laughs> Come back now, y'all. <laughs> I love that. I love. I live in Texas, so I love the the southernness of it all, <laughs> and the food. There's no food like southern food. <laughs> But yeah, it was so much fun having you on. It is. Yeah, Thank anything you. that you want to let our listeners know, um, they can they can find the deck by um, going to your website. Right? What is my yep. spiritanimal dot com? Yep. What is my spiritanimal dot com? Now, is that the same website where we can see like future projects coming out and and that stuff? If we kind of like subscribe or keep up with the website since you've got yes. so much in the mm-hmm. in the kiln that's <laughs> where all the newest news you've heard it here first kind of stuff will be awesome awesome perfect well thank you so much for for joining us today this was so much fun we have to have you back and especially oh. since you have a million other things coming out go ahead it would be my pleasure, <clears throat> pardon me, and honor. Um, and listen, 
thank you guys for what you do. You know, you guys are the messengers, and that makes you angels. And getting the message out, getting the knowledge out, getting the dispelling myths and taking away fears, it's just such a, man, it's just such a sacred job and can sometimes be very thankless. And just thank you so much for doing it. I know you guys have been doing it forever, and but, I, you know, you guys are the unsung heroes. So thank you. Aw. Wow, thank you well, for thank- that. Aww. Yeah. That was very sweet. Thank you for thanking us. <laughs> it's a love <laughs> fest. <laughs> it's a love, love fest. It. Oh, wow. So people are going to be listening to this uh, replay for quite a long time. <laughs> oh, wow. I may have to listen back again myself to catch everything. There was so much in there, you know. I, I want to thank That's all of our listeners of because we don't have a show without our listeners. So thanks to all of you out there in uh, radio land and thanks Bernadette for being on and Mary for being here. Thank you, Dex. And thank you, Bernadette. <laughs> this was wonderful. Awesome sauce. So we'll see you next week. Remember, open lines all show. You know, we we didn't uh, take any calls today, but, uh, you know, every once in a while we have to take a break from that, you know, and you can call in next week, and uh, you can call in tomorrow on Sharona's show. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye Mary. Bye, Bernadette. Bye. Bye. Bye.